If you ever took a look at the sky in Half-Life 1, Counter-Strike 1.6 or other 3D games of late 90s and early 2000s, you might have spotted the pixelated and slightly uncanny looking scenery outside of the playable area. That scenery is called a skybox, which was commonly used to imply area outside of the playable space without the need to actually create geometry there. While primitive by modern standards, they are still used in modding of old games as well as games using the old aesthetic. Of course, there are many ways to create a skybox. You can do most of all the tutorial shows with just Blender or Unreal Engine, but this isn't about the best way to create a skybox, it's about the most authentic way to the Y2K era. So let me introduce you to the Terragen 0.9, which is what most skyboxes used to be made in. I'm saying most because Terragen, as name suggests, is almost exclusively for creating mountain ranges of varying heights. So if you want an urban environment like the one in CS Assault, you will have to use a different software. I will also have to mention Skypaint which the Valve developer community recommends as a tool to use with Terragen, but I will not be covering it in this video. Firstly, we need to get Terragen 0.9 and 0.9 specifically, due to it being the last period appropriate version of the software. Unfortunately, Terragen 0.9 is considered abandonware, which means we cannot get it from the distributor anymore. That's why we'll need to access alternative sources. I personally got my copy from Valve Developer Union, but they cannot advocate for its credibility, so download it at your own risk. For this tutorial, I won't be getting into too much detail on specific functionality of Terragen, as I think the program is self-explanatory for the most part, but I'd like to give some beginner advice and pointers. When you open the program, you'll be greeted by two windows, for Render Control and Landscape. Go into the Landscape window and change the landscape size to 512, which is the largest that unlicensed version can produce. Any modern PC should have no problem handling this size. Then generate the terrain in the Generate Terrain window. If you want to change how the landscape looks, Go into View Slash Sculpt panel, where you will have basic tools for raising and lowering the ground. They are painfully simplistic in their utility though, so I would advise caution while using them, as you can't even control Z your mistakes. Now, pick a spot for your skybox to be centered around. You can use the 3D view to explore the skybox freely, or use the Aerial View window to adjust it slightly. Left click moves your camera, and right click changes its looking direction. If you want the camera to be higher or lower, change the height above surface value. Be warned! Setting it too high will make the surrounding scenery seem smaller. Unreal Engine's default skybox mesh is a sphere, which will not work for our cubicle texture, thus we have to make our own. Fortunately, that's extremely easy. We can actually use the default cube for this. Firstly, select all the faces of the cube and invert the normals using Shift plus N keyboard shortcut. The cube should be red on the outside and blue on the inside in the face orientation mode. This will cause our skybox to be visible from the inside of it. Then set the size of the box to be 10,000 by 10,000 meters. This will allow us to easily set the skybox distance by scaling the mesh. The default cube's UVs should be good enough, although they waste out of space, so if that's a problem for you, feel free to optimize it, although it might make the future steps more difficult. Keep in mind that when we flip the box normals, we also mirror all the texture orientation, so by default, your skybox will be mirrored horizontally. I personally fix it in post, but you might want to redo the UVs after flipping the normals. I would also advise to make a duplicate of the cube, subdivide it once or twice, and then spherize it by 60%. Spherical skyboxes are sometimes better for closer up scenery, but distort the skybox image. Last thing we'll need is our UV layout. Go back to your cube skybox, enter UV editing mode, select all the faces, and then use export UV layout. We'll use it as a template for our skybox. If you use the default UVs, it should look like this. So we've generated our environment, we found a nice spot for our skybox, and we prepare the mesh to render our texture. How do we get the sky image? Firstly, we need to enter the camera setting and set the zoom property to 1. This will give our camera a perfect 90 degrees angle for field of view. Then, go into render settings and set everything to max. I'm sure whatever computer you have, it can handle this software. Don't forget to look into other settings and check what cool options there are. Some of them give great results. Last setting we need to set is the detail option to max mount. I'd recommend using anything below max only for testing, as the loss of quality isn't worth it. We'll need 6 pictures of the environment, which will add up to 6 sides of a cube to surround our map. First off, navigate to the camera orientation options and set everything to 0. This will give you a straight on angle looking west. Set your render side to something square. We'll be using 256 by 256 which is what Goldsource used and rendered the image out. Remember to save it after rendering. If you accidentally close the window before saving, this button will open it again. After you're done with rendering the image, go back to orientation options and change the head value to 90. Render the image again. Overall, we need to render the image at 0 to 0, 90 to 0, 
180 to 0, minus 90 to 0, 0 to 90, and 0 to minus 90 to get full 360 view. You can do it manually as I do, but Valve Developer Wiki offers a script which will generate the 6 images for you. Now we bring all the images to our image manipulator of choice. I'm using Photoshop, but anything with layers will suffice. If you are using 256 for your render width, you will need a 1024 by 1024 canvas to fit them all. Import our UV layout and then use it as a template to connect all your images together. Remember that if you mirror your UVs, the skybox will also be mirrored. This is your opportunity to mirror the image again to get the correct orientation in engine. After importing all the assets we made, we should have the image for the skybox, the cubicle mesh and the spherical mesh if we made one. For this skybox to work, we need two assets. One is the material and the other is the actor. To create a material, just right click on the texture and create a material right here. As you can see, mine is already set up. The first thing you want to do is click the main settings and change the shading mode to unlit. Otherwise your skybox will have weird shadows on it. The second thing is change this texture right here from base color, which is going to be plugged in by default, to emissive color since this is what uh, the unlit shading model uses. Convert this texture to parameter and then focus on world position offset. This is world position offset, so in the gold source engine, the skybox would actually follow your camera. So if you move left, the skybox will also move left. As you can see in my uh, example here, let's make it a bit smaller, yeah, very small. When I move about, it's really easy to tell that this is literally just a box around your level. So to fix that, we obviously can just like scale it up a bit, um, which does uh, look better, but you can still kind of see like it's a box. If you move far enough into the uh, distance, you will start noticing the edges and you will start noticing that this is literally just a box around the level. So what we can do is make it follow the camera. And now, as you can see, even if I am going really fast, the box will always be around me and I can never actually get close to it. As I said, this mirrors how it looked in the Gold Source engine, which was used for Half-Life and Counter-Strike. Now, this effect is quite nice, but you can notice that there is no sense of depth. While I was using a uh, regular one, you can see that the mountains move slightly in uh, comparison to level. So uh, there's a standard perspective effect where the things closer to us move fast and the things distant move very slowly. This effect can be good for like smaller things, but for really big open spaces, you usually want to use that. But, and that's why I added a toggle. This material right here, this is our toggle. So basically this, uh, if node right here, will choose between either using camera position for, our, for the location of the skybox or using zero, which is nothing. Just set it to whatever it is. Why use an if parameter instead of a boolean? Well, I just found to be more reliable than a bool. So the second thing we need is the actual actor. As you can see, if I remove this skybox actor from the space, it will just give us the default sky of the editor. And now if I place it back into the space, it creates another skybox again. And I can just change it to be a bit bigger. Yep. So to create an actor from our mesh, all we have to do is right click on it, add action, and create a blueprint using this. We'll have something that looks like this. Uh, so first thing we need to do is to edit the static mesh and disable shading. We also want to disable collisions, navigation, and overall everything that affects the game in any way. We basically want this to not exist for anything except the visuals. Next thing we want to do is go into the construction script. As you can see, there are two parts to how this actor is structured. So the first thing is the texture. As you can see, when I click on my skybox, there is a sky texture with a parameter here, and I can swap out the sky textures on the fly. Here is the one we made in the tutorial. I don't have to create a new material every time I want to create a new skybox. I just enter uh, my actor and pick whichever texture I need. To do that, we will create a dynamic material instance. This allows us to change parameters of the material on the fly. So parameters like the sky texture or this full camera float. So we create this node, we plug in our static mesh and uh, by default it should be element index zero, which is the ID of texture we are using for the skybox. But if you have a custom mesh and you didn't follow my tutorial, it might be a different uh, ID. So here we actually set the texture parameters. So firstly, we want to set texture parameter value with the texture value. For that, we'll need a texture variable. Remember to set it to instance editable so we can actually edit it through the actor. We set the parameter name to be exactly the same as the parameter name here. So we just can copy this here and paste it here. Then we set a scalar parameter, which is going to be our float. 
We again use the same exact name for the parameter as we did in the material. And then we use a select to convert this bo boolean into a float. There are other ways to convert a boolean into float, but this one is the clearest one, so it's best for tutorial. Then this material isn't actually applied to our mesh yet. We have to use this node set material to actually apply our dynamic material to the mesh. And now we, if you, I mean, if we go into our actor and check the material, as you can see, it's material instance dynamic. So we get the return value, set material, and again, the same element index as here, and we use static mesh as our target. And now if you did everything correctly, you should see this uh, value that allows us to change the skybox on the fly. The fun thing that is that it also allows us to change the skybox from other actors. So if you want to have something happen and change how the sky looks, you can just cast to the actor and change this value. Now, as I said, with skybox, there is this problem where we eventually run into the corner. We can obviously just uh, set the scale to be something really big, like minimize effect, or use the follow camera option to hide it completely, but, but neither of them is universal. Sometimes we can't use that. Sometimes we need a small skybox and sometimes we need to stay in place and not follow the camera. So how do we reduce this uh, corner effect? Well, one way to do that is make the skybox round. As you can see, when it's round, you cannot see the corners because there are none. It's much more... Um, it looks much more natural. Although the problem is that since our image is square, it will get stretched out when we are using a sphere. So to do that, we go back to the um, construction script, I'm using a sequence here to like uh, sort the things out, but you can just do it right after another. And we use the set static mesh function on the static mesh we have here. All we have to do is create another variable, uh, boolean, remember to instance editable. Remember to make it instance editable, that's what allows us to actually change it. And then use the select node to select between the sphere mesh and the box mesh. You can also use an exponential height fog to blend the skybox in with the environment. And there you have it, this is all we need to recreate a retro skybox. And then we are using a select to convert this integer, that's a fucking bull, uh, 